Well, hello everyone. Um, I hope this finds you well. Andy Spoons here. And I uh, wanted to cover something that people have asked me a few times over the last uh, few weeks while I've been working. And that is, what is this vice contraption that I'm working with um, while I'm using my draw knife? And so I wanted to cover the details of a spoon mule and how I built mine, some of the kind of tips and tricks that can help um, speeding up your process and saving your back and uh, and just yeah kind of demystifying this piece of uh, machinery I suppose you could call it um, which is hundreds and hundreds of years old and still basically unchanged from when it was first designed so let's get into the details and people use them for bowl carving people use them for chair making um, different styles of this but all essentially engaged with your your feet and your legs so that your hands can stay free and it basically means that you can ungrip and regrip really quickly as opposed to a table vise or a leg vise where you have to you know rewind and recrank unwind readjust rewind and your hands have to be busy while you're doing that in the case of a shave horse or a spoon mule you don't have to do that you literally just relax your legs and then you know, re-engage the legs. So let's get into the, uh, the anatomy of this. So here is a little bit of a closer look at how I've built mine. So as you can see, it's a really simple design. It's just two lengths of timber. The uh, center strut is just a, a larger piece of treated timber. Added an angled front leg there. Um, this is something that I put up here just in case I need to rest the spoon so that it sits there a little bit um, more comfortably and then I just leave it there so that I don't lose it. This is the head construction and I'll just move this piece of wood out of the way for you. So you can see that I've cut a hole through here. There's a piece of wire that holds these legs from or the jaws from dropping down just two pieces of wood. Just attached a couple of extra pieces so that it kind of um, tightens my range of motion. And this is the really simple rail system. Just basically added an extra piece of timber with a little stool there. So this slides backwards and forwards for me if I need it to. And maybe you can get a bit of a first person view of this so the idea is that I sit in like this my feet go in like that my piece of work is here and then now that this is tucked on that's not going anywhere so I actually I can't use both hands but you get the idea <laughs> like that and it's yeah it's not it's not going anywhere this is completely rock solid but if I wanted to utilize the shift, I just release my feet and it's free. So got my piece, I slide it in, I lock it, and then I'm able to utilize my, my back and my arms and then rotating it back this way. I tend to use the spoon mule as just in between the axe work and the knife work. So when I've done all of the broad brush strokes and I wanna make sure that my, my blank is nice and refined, um, I'm not cutting through a whole bunch of axe marks and, and it's honestly just a bit easier on my back because, well, easier on my back and easier on my hands because if I happen to go straight from the axe to the knife, there might be certain parts of the spoon that require more um, uh, kind of forceful cutting. Usually the back of the bowl is a spot that needs a bit more. And so, for example, if, if this was the back of the bowl, instead of having to sit there with a knife, I can just brace this. And all of these cuts leave a really nice, uniform, clean, polished finish, which is 
which is really nice. Um, and it means that I can work for longer without having to give my hands a break because I'm utilizing much larger muscle groups. So I hope that's helped and kind of demystified a little bit of how this is built. Like I mentioned, this is a bit of an ad hoc spoon mule that I put together from, you know, photos that I'd seen on the internet and, and different videos that I'd watched. Um, and I would love to hear from you if you've uh, built your own spoon mule or if you work in um, the green woodworking community, chair building, and uh, what parts of this you recommend kind of, you know, keeping an eye on. Um, one tip that I've seen that's really good is making sure that where you're positioned, if you're talking about heights, um, trying to make sure that your hands are as comfortably parallel with the ground as possible so that you're not pulling down, you're not pulling up, you're just letting your shoulders sit in a nice comfortable spot and it essentially just means that you're able to, you know, follow through with a more comfortable pull, you, you know, you, you're using most of your energy is put into your legs because that's really the that's the spot that's um, that's going to require the most kind of safety in that sense. Um, but yeah, I hope that's I hope that's helped a little bit. And if you like what you see in my channel, um, consider subscribing and, and liking the videos. And and please let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next. And I hope this finds you all well.